everybody, it's Emily at Arg Schooling, and welcome back to another episode of Homeschool Tidbits. Today we'll be doing episode 66, and we're going to be talking about the subjectivity of living books. In this weekly video series, I will delve briefly into a topic related to homeschooling, and I'll share some of my expertise as a longtime homeschooling mother of four children, three of whom that have graduated, one who is a college graduate, and one who will soon be a college graduate. We've talked about living books pretty extensively at this point, and we know that we should be giving our children a feast of ideas, many of those coming from living books. But the other day I was thinking to myself the difference between twaddle and living books, and it occurred to me that just as one man's trash is another man's treasure, so the same goes for living books. Now that's not to say that I think all twaddle can be living books. There are quite a lot of books out there that are nothing more than mind candy, sometimes even less than that. There's nothing wrong with mind candy, of course, and I don't enforce limits on what my children can and cannot read, precisely because I think we all deserve a little mind candy once in a while. But I do believe that what some people might consider twaddle, another person might call a living book. Let me explain. Just because someone claims a book is living doesn't necessarily mean that you or your children are going to automatically love it. Nor will you necessarily benefit from reading it. Now, that doesn't imply that the book is inherently bad, but rather that it is just not for you. Your mileage will vary depending on your taste and that of your children. Just poking around on the internet the other day, I found Charlotte Mason style book lists where the books were all old and out of print. Most of them excluded modern books, because apparently all modern literature is twaddle if Charlotte Mason herself didn't recommend it. And they were greatly lacking in cultural diversity. I'm not here to perpetuate old-fashioned education for my children or anyone else's. We live in a modern and culturally diverse world, and our reading should reflect that. Nor do I believe that just because a book is old, it's living. I think if Charlotte Mason were alive today, her book lists would be filled with modern and diverse literature. The definition of a living book doesn't say that every book that's labeled as a living book will automatically be best for your child. It just states that to be considered living, it should be filled with inspiring ideas, it should be well written, it should be thought provoking. Millions of books are going to fall into those categories, but which ones will be best for your child? Finding the right books for your children is going to take some trial and error. You need to consider a great many things, but the most important one, I think, is figuring out what your child will actually enjoy reading, because let's be honest, they're not going to gain anything from books they felt forced to read they'll gain from books that they enjoyed. Those are the ones that are going to stick in their mind. So, my youngest is very picky when it comes to books, so I'm going to give you a sort of a case study just to give an example as to how I come to find books for her. My 14-year-old, and we've been doing this for years, so I have kind of understand her reading now, but she's not a big fan of historical fiction, as I have learned over the years. Um, she much prefers, if we do read historical fiction, that it is leaning more toward modern history. And these are just a few of the books that she has enjoyed enough to, I think she would call them favorites. Jefferson Sons by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. The War That Saved My Life and The War That I Finally Won, by also by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. When the World Was Ours by Liz Kessler. These are all mostly new books. They were all published within the last decade or so. Now, those are strictly historical. If you throw some magical elements in the story, she'll almost always eat that up. So, like, books like The Prairie Thief by Melissa Wiley and Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster by Jonathan Oxier are historical fantasies that are mostly historical but just have a little touch of magic included. 
And of course we don't just read historical fiction. If there is a cute magical creature, a talking robot, anything that she could consider a cute friend, she's all in. So she loved the Wild Robot series by Peter Brown, A Rover Story by Jasmine Warga, and Watership Down by Richard Adams. But I can also learn from the books that she did not like. Much to my chagrin, she hated Anne of Green Gables. When we read it last year, she also despised A Wrinkle in Time and The Giver. Now, all three of those books are considered timeless classics that would show up on almost any living book's book list. These are books that I absolutely loved and was looking forward to introducing her to them. But that also doesn't mean she doesn't like science fiction or dystopian literature because she loved The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and The Hunger Games. So looking at the books that she does and doesn't like, I can see that she's not a fan of overdramatic characters like Anne and Meg or dystopian stories that are too heavy-handed or that leave too much to the imagination. And that isn't to say that she doesn't like any classics, because she absolutely loved our Edgar Allan Poe unit that we did last year. And she's also completely captivated by Lord of the Rings. So based on all of that trial and error, I'm better able to curate her reading specifically to her taste to ensure that she's going to get the most out of it. Now, I didn't go through all of that to tell you that the books that my daughter loved are books that your child will also automatically love. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, they might, but they might not. And that's okay. Many of us in the Charlotte Mason community put a lot of stock into what other people claim to be the best of the best living books. But we shouldn't beat ourselves up if a book that everyone else seems to love doesn't end up working for our children. Because that's the thing. Reading is always going to be subjective. My favorite book might be your least favorite book, and vice versa. That doesn't make them bad books, though. It just means they don't fit our particular reading taste. Some people are going to love fantasy, and some prefer realistic fiction. The same goes for our children. Finding the best books for your child is what matters the most when you're curating their reading lists. It can be challenging to do, and it will take some trial and error, and you're going to read some books that don't go over well once in a while, but that's okay, because we're learning from that. And once we learn their reading taste and we introduce them to various genres and forms of storytelling, you'll be well on your way to curating a home library filled with books that they're definitely going to love to read. If you found this video helpful, I hope that you'll check out Build Your Library curriculum. Build Your Library is a secular, literature-rich homeschool curriculum inspired by Charlotte Mason's philosophy of education. Based on nearly 20 years of homeschooling, I created the curriculum I wished I'd had when I first started homeschooling my children. I've spent thousands of hours cultivating the best literature to enhance your children's studies. Our lesson plans make homeschooling simple. Just open them up, gather your books, and go. Our easy-to-use lesson plans include everything you need to homeschool your children. Just add math. Choose from our full year K-12 levels, as well as our fun topical unit studies or, and our newest product, Lit Bites. With Build Your Library, you will cultivate a home library filled with captivating literature and you'll raise children who become lifelong learners. So snuggle up with our lesson plans and a great book or three and have your best homeschool year ever. Every month at Build Your Library, we host a giveaway. This month, we're giving away a prehistory unit study. There's a whole bunch of different ways to enter and one of them is a code. This month's code is Living Books. I'm gonna link more information on the giveaway down below in the description box so you can check that out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tidbit to be helpful and I will see you guys next time. Happy reading, bye.